they will feel so good mentally and maybe even physically that they will themselves extend it for more than a month. Mm -hmm. So all we need to tell people is try it for a month. Don't tell them try it for three months or a year because it may be discouraging. Try it for a few weeks a month and they'll eventually realize themselves that they feel so much better that they'll extend that time themselves. Mike, how did you find carnivore? I initially heard about carnivore diet uh, on uh, Mark Bell's uh, Power Project channel. Uh, I believe it was Paul Saladino, uh, Sean Baker, uh, Lisa Wiedemann, and Mark Bell himself, uh, he also did Carnivore Challenge. Uh, but th th this is where I uh, first heard about Carnivore Diet. But let me begin first about what led me to Carnivore Diet. So, uh, as you all know, a few years ago we had this uh, uh, bacteria going on around the world and uh, the mass media uh, I fell a victim of mass media that was scaring everyone uh, that if you're obese or, or if you have heart conditions then you will likely have a higher chance of severe complications so uh, first of all, let me put my um, physical parameters. I'm 5'11", and I used to be around 170, 180 pounds. Uh, fairly athletic guy. Uh, I played a lot of sports, and I was eating mostly standard American diet. You know, my lunch was, you know, go to Wendy's, uh, Burger King, KFC, all the standard, you know, processed food. But, you know, because I was fairly active, uh, I was able to kind of compensate for some of the damage that uh, the food was doing to my body. But I didn't know it at that time because I felt okay. Uh, but then this, you know, virus came in and uh, they said, if you're slightly obese, or have significant amount of body fat, which I believed I had, uh, even though I had athletic build, I had still like a puffy look. So, you know, when I looked myself in the mirror, I was like, oh, I'm kind of fat. So, you know, I started researching, okay, how can I lower my body fat? Uh, so I can fall into the category of people that are uh, that are at lower risk of having severe complications of the disease. So I came across, you know, low fat, high protein, plant-based diet, and I started reading about it more. I found, I found some influential people on YouTube, uh, but for their uh, privacy, I won't mention the names. Uh, because I realize some people may still follow those people. So I don't want to put shame and negative opinion about those channels. Uh, but I started to incorporate changes to my diet. To more of more of a healthy diet. So more veg vegetables, uh, lean protein, uh, minimize the fats. So as you can possibly imagine, uh, it consisted of... Uh, skinless uh, protein, uh, skinless chicken breasts. Uh, you know, my veggies were like higher fiber. So the idea was to, for me to feel full, but not consume enough, you know, so-called calories uh, that we all know it's, you know, we shouldn't use this terminology, but just to, uh, be consistent with majority of people. That's the metric I want to be using. Uh, 
So consume low calorie, but feel full. So I can lose the weight and body fat. And you know, as you may guess, uh, initially it worked. Uh, I lost about 10, 20 pounds. So I went to like 150-ish level. 150 to 160 pounds. But then uh, it kind of turned into mental... Uh, I don't really want to call it anorexia. I would rather classify it as orthorexia. And for those that do not know what that means, orthorexic behavior is where you're obsessed about healthy way of eating. But then, you know, what is healthy? Uh, there are many ways to uh, categorize your diet as healthy. And, you know, I thought what I was eating was healthy. Uh, you know, lean fish, chicken, lean, you know, chicken breasts, uh, you know, spinach, mushrooms, you know, high fiber vegetables to fill me up. I consider this healthy because uh, it was uh, enough for me to uh, meet my goal, which is lose body fat and not be starving and hungry. So that's kind of what led me into, uh, I want to call it uh, one path uh, zone. Like uh, I lost body weight, but then I didn't come to a point where I said, okay, enough. It's, it's good enough. I kept going and I keep losing more fat and more body fat, body weight overall. And I was still going to the gym training. So that was an extra pressure, extra stress on my body. Uh, because not only I was malnourished from the diet uh, by working out on a regular basis, I was increasing the demand uh, on the fuel and uh, nutrients that my body required to grow, but I was not providing it. At least it wasn't in sufficient quantities. So eventually I started to uh, feel, uh, feel uh, physically, feel uh, the damage that I was doing to myself. And I started to develop some joint pains, uh, overall energy uh, deficit. I, I felt fatigue. Uh, my sleep wasn't good. Uh, I guess my thyroid uh, functionality was suppressed because I was very sensitive to cold. Like literally even at the summer times uh, I wear, I need to wear a hoodie uh, and turn off the AC in my apartment because I felt cold. So, and I'm, you know, I wasn't sweating. So all the body thermoregulation uh, tune knob was way off from what it's supposed to be. And, you know, my reproductive system probably also took a hit. Uh, you know, any hormone was probably affected by the way I ate and the way I was stressing my body with uh, exercise. So, you know, and it kept for majority of the lockdown that was in place, overall pandemic, and then when things started to open up again, uh, I didn't really go back to what I was doing before, like the way of eating, like standard American diet. I kept eating the way uh, 
that led me to uh, the weight loss and hormone uh, suppression. And it really wasn't until I felt, as I mentioned before, it really wasn't until I felt physically the damage uh, that I did to my body that I decided to make a change. So, you know, me still being involved in the fitness, uh, one day I came across a carnivore diet. And as I mentioned on Mark Bell's Power Project, and, you know, I'm not... Uh, I'm not hesitant to name and talk about this channel in particular because I have very good opinion about this channel. I still highly recommend uh, for you know any fitness uh, uh, tips, whether it's you know powerlifting, bodybuilding, uh, jujitsu. Uh, they also tend to bring some awesome guests. Talk about uh, how to manage stress, what are some of the uh, habits that you can do to optimize your life, like, you know, how you can optimize your sleep and how you can optimize your diet, some tips for, you know, obese people, like using a mouth tape. So a lot of variety of tips that they have on their podcast. So I highly recommend the channel. But anyway, on that channel, I came across Paul Saladino. Uh, it was an old podcast. Uh, so when Paul Saladino was the strict carnivore, so I heard about, you know, eating, you know, mostly animal based food, uh, meat, some organ meats, muscle meats, my uh, eggs and not really needing needing anything else because uh, this should provide enough healthy fats, high nutrients, uh, most the most available bioavailable protein that you can get. So it has everything you need and nothing that you don't. Uh, so I decided to, you know, maybe one day I'll give it a try because I was hearing about a multi multitude of conditions that you can fix, whether it's like back pain, joint uh, motion, joint pain improvement, uh, improving your hormones because you provide your body with healthy fats, uh, which is important for body uh, functionality so one day I said I'll give it a try and that one day was uh, this year uh, on May 1st to be exact I treat this as my starting date but you know before I started carnivore diet in itself uh, I went to Mexico on pilgrimage trip in April and it was really at that trip where I kind of talked to myself. I actually stayed, um, you know, we had a mass every day as part of the program. Uh, and on that very first day after the mass was held, I stayed longer in a church, kind of talk with the God, uh, and myself, I stayed there for like 10, 20 minutes, uh, just to think about, you know, what have I done to my body and my spirit by treating my body with excessive exercise and poor diet? And was it worth it? Uh, so, then. I still have goosebumps when I say it, but I decided to, uh, during the trip, fix my spirit. Uh, 
that was the main goal. Fix my spirit. And because I think body and spirit is a unity. Uh, if spirit is damaged, you will damage your body. If you damage your body, you will damage your spirit. Uh, it's it's a one piece, in my opinion. Like, uh, you know, south and north pole, uh, pole sides of the magnet. You cannot separate. Uh, so, I returned from the trip. Uh, I felt spiritually healed. And then I decided, you know, it's time to fix myself physically. Fix my body. So I can become uh, healed in general by having both pieces addressed. So spirit was fixed. Now it's time for my body. So May 1st, I decided uh, to start carnivore diet. Uh, initially with two meals, uh, but meat and eggs, it was pretty much from day one all the way until now. And you know, me hearing uh, people on YouTube, uh, starting with very influential uh, carnivores like Dr. Chafee and Dr. Baker and what they eat and they said, okay, it's meat and eggs, it's all I need for now. Nothing too complicated. But uh, I was really interested in uh, fixing my issues as quickly as possible because the pain was not, uh, it wasn't durable. I couldn't handle the pain for too long. So, you know, any caffeine, whether it was green on black tea or pre-workout supplements that I used to abuse before, I cut them all out, zero. No, you know, one step at a time, just cut them all out. You know, it it's not that time. It wasn't the time for me to play around. Oh, let's lower by 10%, 20%. No, just cold turkey, cut them all out. Uh, and, you know, obviously uh, some of the symptoms uh, got worse because of oxalate dumping. But then I told myself it's only temporary. I was in pain, I was in pain for so long. I can wait two couple of weeks, maybe a month or two uh, more. But I know I'll get better. It's it's my only chance. It's the only chance I get. Uh, so, you know, eventually after a month, all the pains got away. And that's where I felt like it's working. It's working. And uh, I will co continue doing this because uh, the more uh, is still to come, like improving all my hormones, uh, increase my body weight. It's still in progress. This will never end, I think. So when I when, when my joint pains went away, uh, I started to be more mm, more uh, what's the correct word I should use? I started to journal my. Uh, the reliefs I was getting, the improvements. So, as I mentioned, joint pain. I began feeling better in terms of energy. Uh, my, as I mentioned before, I had as cold sensitivities. Uh, not anymore, really. And you know, and it's started to improve gradually over time. So I feel better now. I feel like my body is starting to working the way it should. Not only the way it was, it's working better than it used to. And my body mass is increasing. You know, I, I actually gained about 14 pounds so far. 
uh, and I forgot to mention my initial weight. Uh, on May 1st was like 188 pounds. Right now I'm about 152. So it's about 14 pounds. Uh, and it's both muscle and body fat. I don't know the proportion, but do I care? I don't really care because they're both important. Uh, when you're pretty lean, your hormones will not work optimally uh, unless you take some some drugs. But then again, I never took them. I'm not planning to take them. So I'm not scared to gain body fat. I'm not scared to gain muscle mass and anything else that may add up to overall body weight. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I just uh, finished my fifth month because mm -hmm. it's October 3rd as of today. So I'm very happy with how I'm going so far. Mm. Uh, the, the way I like to phrase it is I work out like a lion. I eat like a lion. I rest like a lion and I feel like a lion. Mm -hmm. And that's nice. a very good feeling to have. Nice. Um, so, well, first, congratulations on turning things around. I mean, your, your weight still does seem on the low side for your height. I would still classify myself as lean. Mm. Uh, but I can notice that uh, compared to like a few months ago, mm -hmm. uh, I am definitely uh, increase my subcutaneous fat mm -hmm. because it's harder to see those muscle muscle tone. I, I can I'm still lean, mm -hmm. and I can still all see majority of muscles on my body. Mm. Uh, and I don't even have to be under good lightning uh, to see. But, you know, I'm definitely getting some body fat on me and muscle mm -hmm. growth too, especially on the legs. Uh, mm. I can feel it on my jeans, uh, mm. tighter, you know, ties, yeah. which is good. Yeah. You know? But yeah, I can picture myself being even more getting bigger in the future. So I still have headroom both mm. in the muscle mass and body fat. So that's kind of what I'm aiming for. I don't have an ultimate no. goal. Kind of whenever I decide it's like, oh, that's, that's the way I would like to remain for some time. Mm -hmm. Then maybe I'll kind of make changes to my workout routine or the diet kind of be like a maintenance phase. Mm. But for now, priority is give my body stimulus to growth and mm. provide enough nutrients to to grow. Mm. Yeah. So um, when you go back to the, the diet you were doing before, when you were, when you were feeling like you were losing the weight and and um losing too much weight and you were getting the joint pain and you said you felt like you were suffering orthorexia um right did you have anyone talking to you like friends or family saying you know you need to you need to put on weight or are you okay or anything like that yeah so my my family definitely definitely noticed that i lost significant amount of body weight mm -hmm. and you know initially maybe they didn't uh talk to me uh they just maybe treated this as you know me i was trying to maybe lose a few pounds you know but then eventually they decided that okay it's it's too much so mm. they definitely they talked to me they said hey, what's happening you're losing too much weight 
And I said, you know, everything's fine. Everything's under control. Uh, I don't have anorexia. I'm, but it's really hard to convince parents mm. uh, <laughs> because the, the usual, you know, how it goes. Parents is supposed to tell children what to do, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. So it was hard for me to convince them that everything is under control, that it's not anorexia. I'm just trying to lose a few pounds so I can maybe feel healthier in terms of uh, in on uh, in contrast of the uh, pandemic that uh, if I maybe lose a few pounds, I'll feel healthier and I'll be less of a risk uh, to have severe complications from the pandemic virus. And, you know, my, my way of convincing them was, hey, if I'm at the lower risk of catching the disease, uh, you'll be at the lower risk of me uh, spreading it to you. Mm. That was kind of my logic. And initially they, they believed it. I'm pretty sure at one point they started to consider me as having some mental, um, maybe not necessarily mental, but eating disorder. Mm. So yeah, I yeah. definitely had some tough times with my family. Mm. I probably won't go into details, but yeah. yeah, they did think that I had anorexia. Sure. And it was hard for me to convince that it wasn't anorexic behavior, but more it's like an effect of uh, me trying to eat healthy. Mm. Because I wasn't trying to avoid eating. I was just trying to make sure that what I eat is healthy. Yeah. You know, back then what I consider to be healthy at that point, mm -hmm. which, you know, now I know better. Mm. And so if you if you were to look at that time mm -hmm. like no, not not to do with your family just about yourself right that time versus now what is the difference you feel in your your thinking or your mindset or or basically what's going on up here what what's what's one of the big differences you would notice it's a tough question uh i think from mental sense standpoint uh before i was i i wasn't aware of the side effects of the damage i could do to my body by transition to you know low fat high protein diet and i had i definitely had that mindset that the more body fat you have uh the sicker you are mm -hmm. which you know it's true to some extent but it's kind of like a u, a u shaped curve uh, there is that optimal point at which uh, the human body will operate optimally. If you go to the left or to the right in body fat percentage, uh, your body will suffer. Mm. If you're obese, uh, you will develop certainly some body uh, dysfunction if you're skinny not enough body fat on you you will also suffer some hormonal changes and i didn't realize that this at that time now i'm more conscious of the importance of body fat and i know this is one of the messages that dr kilts is spreading always talk about you know Body fat is not really the cause of disease. We should not be, we should not aim 
to be skinny. And his explanation is very simple. If you're skinny and there is a time of famine, uh, you're die. You're gonna die mm. soon. Because you don't have energy on you uh, to support in times of uh, you know, not having uh, access to food. So body fat is important. And excess, obviously, not too much. Um, not too good to have either, but we should not aim to be skinny. And sometimes I like to repeat it to myself. Maybe less often than I should have in the past. It's still a very important message. And I may even repeat it here multiple times. For those that are obese, definitely should lose some body fat, but the goal should not to be skinny. You need to have some body fat on you to work optimally. So that's kind of my mindset. I'm not afraid to put body fat because I'm, I know I'm still kind of on the low side. So. It's uh, yeah. important for people. Uh, it is an important message for people to understand. You know, it's not one or the other. It's somewhere in the middle. Right. Yeah. And what that send point is, it varies from person to person. That's why I'm really... Uh, against people comparing themselves to others in terms of, uh, you know, oh, they're, they are at this height and they weigh at this amount and I'm a little shorter, so I should weigh less. No, you don't know that. It's, it's whenever you feel uh, healthy, that's kind of where you should maybe start analyzing okay a few pounds less a few pounds more it you will feel very well and the rate the rate of weight loss weight gain varies from person to person the duration of certain symptoms that you have that you have to deal with varies from person to person Every human is different, so we can we should not compare. That's also kind of the message I would like to maybe say. That's why I don't the only thing the only person you can compare against is yourself from the past. That's the only person you should compare against. Yeah, that's always a good measurement. Am I doing better than I was yesterday? Right. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling better? Mm -hmm. That's a good sign. Keep going. Are you starting mm -hmm. to feel worse? Or maybe you push yourself too much. You know, don't look at the others. You could look so, at them. You could you could look at them as an inspiration, for mm -hmm. sure. But don't you know, get those numbers from other people. It may do damage to you mentally someone who's on the fence about doing carnivore maybe you know they're kind of indecisive they're not sure they want to they want to try something different maybe they've been on a vegan diet maybe they've been on a sad diet all their lives whatever it happens to be but they're they're, they're not sure they've heard a lot of things about eating meat that are negative in the past what is your message to them that would convince them to give it a try? Well, first of all, uh, if you have any physical pain, definitely, you know, you should change something that you're doing. But it's not always obvious. Sometimes, sometimes you think you feel fine and you don't realize you can feel even better. Right, that's, and it's really hard for people to kind of realize because uh, most people associate 
Confucius with some pain or a visual uh, change uh, but they can never you never know how well you can feel uh, comparing to what you feel right now so I would say uh, give it a try like it could be like we have those New Year's resolutions. Some people say, oh, I'll go to the gym for a month. Or starting January, starting this year, uh, I'll cut down on coffee or alcohol. Uh, same thing, just say, tell it to yourself. Maybe starting next month, I'll try to eat a carnivore style for for a month and i always say uh in the worst case scenario uh you won't see any change in how you feel uh whether it's from mental perspective or physical look but at least you will eat the food that tastes good uh, because you know, whether it's meat, uh, fish, eggs, any animal-based uh, food option, uh, everything is very tasty. Uh, I mean, you can screw it up always, but it's a very good, very good food. Uh, you just feel very good afterwards, you know? especially after good, thick, medium rare piece of ribeye. I mean, it's kind of like you took some drugs. That's kind of making me feel. hungry. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, I just ate so I can talk about food. Um, but yeah, give it a try for a month. You know, consider it, consider it like a challenge. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work. But at least you'll enjoy some good food and you'll save some money because it's cheaper than the standard crap that you that people most people buy in the store. So I don't think it will hurt. Mm. It can only help or you'll just enjoy the food. Mm. Nice. So there's no losing in this in this test, right? You can't lose. You can only mm. remain where you started or you can get some benefits. Mm. And, you know, most people uh, say that uh, usually you see, you, use some, uh, you see some benefits after a few months or maybe even it can take up to a year. But I think... If someone tries it for a month, for majority of cases, they will feel so good mentally and maybe even physically that they will themselves extend it for more than a month. Mm -hmm. So all we need to tell people is try it for a month. Don't tell them try it for three months or a year because it may be discouraging try it for a few weeks a month and they'll eventually realize themselves that they feel so much better that they'll extend that time themselves mm. you won't even have to convince them they'll just mm. keep going it, and and actually that's one of the powers of carnival you know it's hard to get started but once you're started it's uh, a self uh, a, a right. self-convincing loop or something like that you know and that's kind of where we go back of or go back to uh compare yourself to your previous you mm. once you compare how you felt and how you feel now on the carnivore lifestyle carnivore diet you will realize it he you, you won't go back mm -mm. like i will not go back mm. and uh, yeah. i can't foresee myself 
any cheat meals. I don't know. Mm. It's hard for me to imagine. Some people say, oh, I'll try to introduce some stuff. Like, why? Like, I mean, I don't have those temptations. Mm. Uh, I know some people still struggle with addiction. And I don't want to sound like I'm better than others. Definitely not. Uh, I feel... uh, I feel sorry for those people that still struggle with addictions, but it will pass. Just stay strong. Mm. Stay, you know, consistent. And eventually it will get better. Mm. But yeah. Yeah, nice. So can you talk a little bit about your YouTube channel, please? Uh, Yeah, so I have a YouTube channel uh on which i'm planning to not i'm planning to i am putting some content uh sharing my carnivore experiences and some some of the maybe health benefits too uh i'm not a frequent uploader like you for example like every day uh, I think my last video was like two weeks ago. I did some video on grounding, which, by the way, uh, I'm wearing the ESD strap right now. It's a cheap few bucks solution to ground yourself. Uh, but yeah, I did a video on grounding, kind of demonstrating that when I put the strap on, uh, my voltage goes to zero. And I like to read a lot and share the knowledge. So sometimes I'll put some content uh, to share with others because I believe we should share. Uh, And that's kind of another quote I like to say. If you know, if you are aware of something that helps and you're not sharing it with others, the longer you keep it to yourself, the knowledge, that's how long someone may be suffering because you're quiet. So when you're aware of some health benefits, just like in this case, carnivore diet, uh, share your story, share with others. Because when you don't share, there is that one person that may find your channel online and decide to give it a try for themselves. So the longer you keep quiet, uh, that's how long someone may be suffering. So that's kind of the purpose of my channel. Share some content, share my experiences, and maybe some health benefits, uh, some health hacks that you can do. Uh, So not a lot of content, but when I upload, I try to make it informative and valuable. And I highly recommend everyone to look it up. I'm, I'm not expecting it to be, you know, thousands of subscribers, but anyone that can, you know, follow my story and communicate with me their experiences, kind of exchange uh, the knowledge I think it's important. So it's kind of my hobby. Uh, Communicate, integrate with carnivore family. I like to call it carnivore family, not just community. Uh, Because I think we're more than community. I 99% of cases I see people uh, supporting each other. Uh, spreading cloth. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're more than just coming. That's why I will always say in the chats, hi, family. Because I consider you guys my family. And that's that's what I would also say is my non-scale victory. Uh, discovering that carnivore family. 
uh, the people that I can always reach out to, uh, communicate with. When I have down days, I can talk to someone. When I have very good days, I, I can share uh, what happened to me, my successes. So that's definitely my non-scale victory, uh, having that carnivore family available. And there are so many people that it's all, always someone available to uh, to talk to. And I'm definitely not the only one that can share uh, that non-scale victory. Mm. But when you're someone that don't have a lot of friends, discovering that community, that's such a huge win. Yeah. It's maybe maybe yeah. one of the biggest I have so far. Yeah. That's very well said. Yeah. Right. Um, Mike... Thank you so much for joining us and sharing your journey. I really appreciate you coming on and taking the time. Yeah, no problem. I'm always happy to share.